In this video, we're going to be talking about guides and grids and how to be working precisely within Adobe Illustrator. And first, we're going to be talking about guides. And as you noticed before, when we started dragging our objects around, we're going to be seeing all these purple lines, which are smart guides. And most of the time, they are really helpful to align your elements quickly. And by default, objects can be aligned to each other through their center points or their edges or even when we try to intersect our elements and so on. So usually using them is very helpful to us. However, there are other guides that we can be using to be even more precise while we are working. And those guides can be dragged from our ruler from either our left side like that or our upper side. And if you're not seeing these rulers, you can be showing them from view and choose rulers and you can be hiding them or showing them from here or even via command or control R on your keyboard. Or even if you don't have anything selected, you can be right clicking anywhere and you can be hiding or showing rulers and so on from here. Or either from our properties panel in here, you can be showing our rulers from here. So back to our guides first, then we're gonna be talking more about rulers. And as you can see, we can be dragging that square to align it to our rulers in here and by default these rulers are locked in position so you cannot be selecting them and they will not be printed and you can be unlocking these guides anytime by right clicking anywhere and you can choose unlock guides and then you can be selecting your guide and start moving it around anywhere you would like or even change its coordinates from here via your transform section in your properties panel or even from our transform panel in here we can be changing our guide coordinates so we can be setting for instance 10 millimeters and that will be 10 millimeters in here and then we can be selecting that one as well however we're gonna be choosing our x values for this one making this one to 10 millimeters like that and that also can be very helpful if we need to set these guides for our design so we have some bleed in here and maybe we need to set our logo in here or even get our try fold document or even have multiple folds or even if we would like to design a brochure or pamphlet having a fold or two folds or even more than that we can be dragging our guides and we can be setting these guides precisely within our design file for more reference while we're designing so let's say we need to set that one in the middle of our artboard and that artboard is a4 so we're gonna be selecting that value i'm gonna be typing 297 divided by 2 and here we go and this is really a cool new feature that we can be using in Adobe Illustrator we can be doing some simple math in here so for instance we can be using plus or minus or divided or multiply like that so we can be using that feature for even more precise control of our guides and putting them very precisely within our artboard so let's say we need to move that guide to the very end of our artboard we're gonna be multiplying that by two and it will be at the very end of our artboard if we need to get it back to the center we're gonna be dividing that by two and so on and that could be very helpful if we have like a cover design that one is the front side of our cover and that part could be the back side of our cover and the other cool feature in here is that we can be converting any object to guide so let's choose that polygon for instance and let me move it in here and then we're gonna be going to view then guides then make guides and then we will be having our shape converted into a guide like that and we can be using that for aligning our elements so i'm gonna be transforming that and notice our smart grid is working to align that with our new guides or even let's say we need to draw a line on 30 degrees and we need to have our grid on 30 degrees so i'm gonna be drawing a line using the line tool in here and I'm gonna be drawing that one uh, by default if we start pressing on shift and drag it up or zero will be having a 45 degree as you can see or zero degree so let's say we need to use a 30 degree angle or even 15 degrees we can be drawing our line maybe on 45 or even zero and then we can be changing our angles easily from here so let's be picking 30 degrees and then I will be giving that a stroke color to make it more obvious 
and then I will move it around within my design maybe like that and then I can be dragging that one on the same line to have the same angle on and then I can be converting that one into a guide using the shortcut command 5 or from the menu like we did to our polygon and we'll be having that one as guide as well so once you get all your guides set in place I really recommend that you lock your guides not to move them by mistake and that will be affecting your design later so we're gonna be choosing lock guides and you can be using the shortcut command or control semicolon to hide or show them as well for a quick access of guides now one more thing to cover in here I'm gonna be unlocking guides again if we're dragging a guide from here and we need to make it instead of vertical to horizontal we're gonna be pressing the alt or option key on our keyboard and it will be transformed and if you need to delete that one anytime you can be pressing the delete key on keyboard and it will be deleted and also we can be hiding our guides from here as well or even lock them or even hide the smart guides from here if you are going to work with your guides or even you want to be working in a free form and you don't need to use these smart guides you can be locking them from here or even from our view menu and you're gonna be hiding smart guides the other thing we're gonna be talking about is our grid system and we're gonna be showing our grid from here from view menu as well and we're gonna be showing our grid from here and then you will be having your grid and it's not gonna be printed as well but just for your reference and it's really recommended that you start customizing your grid before you start using it in your design so we're gonna be going to our preferences from here and we're gonna be choosing guides and grid and you can be changing your color from here or even choose dots instead of lines from here and this one is very important you can be setting your grid line every let's say 10 millimeters as well which is going to be making our grid more precise and also you can be choosing how many subdivisions between those grid lines so i'm going to be picking 10 as well to have a subdivision each and every millimeter and here you have the option to make it in back and show pixels above 600 percent zoom and also for our guides we can be changing its color from here or the style as well from lines to dots and once you're done with that you can be pressing ok and you will be having a more precise grid to work with so i'm going to be selecting that one for instance and let's make it size 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters and then i will be activating the snap to grid option from our view as well and snap to grid and once we start dragging our square we're gonna be having our square snapped to our grid as you can see and so on and it will be snapped also to each and every subdivision as you can see in here and i'm gonna be duplicating that square to show you how easy it is to align our objects even without using our align panel and being more professional within our design and this could be very helpful if you're designing your logos or pictograms to work on a grid especially if they are geometrical shapes that will make your life so much easier and it will make your work very professional so now let's zoom out so now we have our rulers in here in millimeters we can be changing that by right clicking on our rulers and we can be choosing inches or pixels centimeters or points and also we can be changing to artboard rulers which are usually the best which i will be telling you why just right now so now we've got our rulers on zero points starting from here and here if you can see that or even we can be dragging our guides to make it even more visible to you guys to our artboard and we start zooming maybe we need to hide our grid for a second in here and here as you can see we've got our zero point on our top left corner of our artboard and we can be changing our zero reference point by dragging from the upper corner in here and choosing any other zero reference point so if i set it here for instance i will be having our zeros started from here and from here so if we start moving that rectangle around from our x and y values we're going to be selecting maybe 0 and 0 to our new 0 points in here and if we need to set it back to default we're going to be double clicking in here and you will be having your 0 points back to that part however now we are on global rulers and that means if we duplicated that artboard 
and let me duplicate that one first holding our artboard tool and then holding alt key or option key and drag it around like that and then I will be moving in here we will be seeing that our ruler is going on beyond our A4 size even to 300 millimeters and 320 and so on so it's gonna be quite hard to move my guides and objects within that new artboard so we're gonna be switching to artboard rulers instead of global rulers from here and see now we've got our zero point in here starting with our new artboard however if we start moving to our original artboard in here and select it we're gonna be having our zero reference in here so each artboard gonna be having its own ruler which is much better in my opinion to work with instead of the global rulers which you can be choosing also from here we can be also making our background transparent from here maybe for working on bng file or even for designing white objects or any other design object that's it for this lesson thank you so much for your time i'll be seeing you in next one bye